welcome back to the channel. This is my co-star Chalupa. He's helping me introduce the video today. Say hi to the camera, Chalupa. You're famous now. I always like to shine a spotlight on products that are good stuff that don't cost as much as some of their competitors. Today, what I'm talking about is the Cold Steel Peacemaker 2 and the smaller version, the Cold Steel Peacemaker 3. So these are kind of purpose-built boot knife slash concealable belt knives. Uh, and there's some very interesting, cool features about these that make them set apart from a lot of their competitors. Some people overlook these because they're not new designs. They're made from a relatively inexpensive steel and they've been around forever, but you should definitely not overlook them. Today, we're gonna to talk about the cool features of them and why you might actually want one of these knives. So the Cold Steel Peacemaker 2 and 3 are interesting because there's a lot of unique features about these knives. Let's first talk about the weight of these knives. So the Cold Steel Peacemaker 3 is the smaller one. This is a four inch fixed blade knife uh, and it only weighs 3.3 ounces. Uh, it's very light for something its size. To uh, compare, this is a Bradford Guardian 3.2 with a three inch blade, so it's a much smaller knife. This weighs 4.2 ounces, so it's very light for the size that it is. Uh, this is the Peacemaker 2, the larger one. This is a five inch blade knife, uh, only weighs 5.4 ounces on my scale. The whole package of the knife and sheath only weighs 7.2 ounces. On the smaller version, you're looking at 4.6 ounces for the whole uh, package here. Uh, to give you, again, some perspective on that, the Bradford Guardian, I mean, this one has a clip on it, but you're looking at 6.9 ounces in a smaller knife. Uh, that's very light. Now, because of that, the uh, the, the blade is on the thinner side. It's not excessively thin. Uh, you know, if you if you compare it to some other things, uh, you know, let, let's pull out the Kaiser clutch here. It's thinner than that, right? It's not super thin, uh, but this isn't a, a hard use knife. This is more in line with what I would consider would be a good utility knife because it has a good utility knife blade shape. Uh, but it, you know, it's meant to be obviously with the with the boot knife configuration. It's it's kind of a stabbing blade, that thinner tip. Uh, I want to point out also about this blade, the quality of the blade. I mean, this is Scandi grind first before Scandi grind was cool, right? This blade is many many years old. This design and it was Scandi ground the whole time. But I want you to look at the finish on this blade. This is a polished finish. Uh, on a blade that costs less than 20 bucks and the polished finish goes all the way to the edge. This is beautiful. I mean, the grind lines are pretty much perfect. There's a slight asymmetry in the tip here, but it's not bad. I have seen $400 knives that didn't have a blade this nice. Uh, same thing on the larger version, you know, just the same kind of quality polished finish. The grind lines are, the tip is perfectly centered on this one. Uh, you know, still grind lines perfect, Scandi grind all the way to the hilt. It's just, I mean, it's just fantastic. And this is less than 30 bucks. Uh, the sheaths are interesting because they've done a pretty good job designing this as a concealable knife. So this kind of weird high sheath, what this does is it protects you. So let's say you're, you're putting this in your boot. This is designed as a boot knife. My boot comes up to, you know, the top of this, so my boot's going to come up to here. So the knife's going to be in my boot up to about here, and my calf is going to be on the back where my hand is. This sheath is designed so that I can draw this knife from concealment, and even if I get the tip kind of funky, that back of the sheath protects me as I draw this right next to my skin. So this is a very well designed sheath for a boot knife. This clip is a little too tight. It's very hard to get that clip on and off of your boot. Uh, or, or pants, but it kind of needs to be tight because let's say you're putting this on your belt. So this, this conceals well inside of a belt too. Uh, I'll, I'll show pictures, uh, but that's clipping just onto your pants and it needs to clip onto your pants tightly enough so that when you draw the knife, uh, you don't pull just the sheath out. Uh, and this does a good job of that. 
So these are very concealable knives for being such relatively large knives. Here is a shot of the Peacemaker 2 being carried inside the belt, uh, just so that you can see. The clip goes behind the belt onto the pants, so that when you draw the knife, it stays on the pants. Again, that has to be a pretty stiff clip to keep that from pulling the whole sheet out of your belt. Putting it back in is a two-handed operation because you do have to hold that sheath open to get it to click back in there. Uh, they've done a good job of keeping the handle thin without making it uncomfortable. It's rubbery, it's grippy. Uh, I, you know, My XL glove size hand just fits perfectly in the smaller one. It feels a bit thin, but it's not uncomfortably so. I've had many other knives that were just much less comfortable. Bradford, for instance, this is this is too small right here on the Bradford. It doesn't feel comfortable in my hand. On the cold steel, they don't take it quite that small in the middle, so it's it's just just about right. It's as thin and small as it can be while still being comfortable. The larger one, again, is a bit larger all around, and this is very comfortable. Uh, it's a bit square, but that leaves me very, very good uh, idea of where the edge is. I love how the edge comes all the way down to the bottom of this knife. There is no difficulty when you're carving on wood or something like that. If I'm going to put a lot of pressure on the wood here, I can put that right down next to my hand uh, and not have any trouble putting a lot of force into that uh, because the edge is right down by my fingers. The grip here is symmetrical. Uh, it seems a little odd at first. You would think it would interfere with using the knife, but because the edge comes down so close to your hand, you can put your thumb up like this on here instead of putting it up on the blade like you normally would, and you don't lose any leverage because the, the edge is all the way down by your, by your fingers. It's, it's, it's a wonderful design. What this symmetrical grip also does is it means that I can put this knife in my boot this way, or this way. So I can draw this right-handed or left-handed. I can customize whichever way I want it to be. I can put it in my belt that way. Uh, so it makes a very good versatile carry system because I can flip the knife around without even have to having to take the sheath out of my belt and switch it, switch the clip around. So it's a good design for concealment. I wish this part were a little thinner down here. Uh, it's a consequence of how wide they had to make it up here to get the handle around there. So, you know, consequence of the design, but it's actually a really cool feature. So there's a lot to like about this knife. Uh, small problems with this knife that may interfere with some users. This spot right here on the sheath where it clicks in around the handle and kind of holds the handle tight right there in that spot where it kind of clicks in. From the factory, that's very sharp. I just took the knife, knocked off the edge a little bit. Uh, so that it doesn't tear off the handle. You can see on these knives, it's already starting to put some wear on the handle from me drawing it in and out a bunch of times. That's worse if you don't take off that edge. It's not hard to do. It's not a huge deal, uh, but it would be nice if they had taken care of that from the factory. The bigger problem is the soft rubber in the handles. If I grab this blade and kind of pull it to the side, what I'm hoping you can see is that there's a little gap that opens up right between the handle and the knife. You can see it pretty well on the back here. If I kind of pull down like this, um, that gap right there opens up right there in the knife. Uh, and when you're using it, if you're using this to clean fish or something, what you would end up with is uh, water gunk down in around the blade, and there's no way to take the handle off and fix that. Uh, so it will eventually get down in there, you know, contaminate cause rust, etc. Given that these knives are so inexpensive, it's hard to fault them too much for that. Uh, but, you know, it, it would be an issue if you were using this knife to clean fish a lot or something. I wouldn't necessarily use it for that, although it would be good. Uh, you can see it's got a very versatile blade shape. Uh, the, the blade has got enough curve to it that you can easily cut along a flat surface. I'll do this on my two by four here. Uh, you can see it does not get in the way of my hand cutting that rope at all. There's plenty of flat surface here to cut rope in your hand like this. Uh, you're not going to run out before it slides through. Very, very versatile blade shape. I love the straight blade shape. I just kind of like that. This is this is almost a classic Scandi, um, you know, 
Scandinavian bushcraft knife shape, uh, but with a thin tapering tip for, for stabbiness uh, and, the, and the polished blade. So lots to like here, lots of cool features. Uh, I really like these knives. For the price, it's hard to beat. Cold Steel does a fantastic job heat treating the 4116 steel, so this performs a lot better than you would expect it to for such a cheap steel. Uh, I got 450 plus cuts out of these without dulling the edge too much. Uh, that's on par with the best I've tested. That's not what 4116 has a reputation for, but don't shy away from these knives just because of that. It actually makes them very good uh, at edge retention and uh, very good corrosion resistance too. You don't have to worry about this rusting too much, even if you're carrying it in your boot, uh, where it would tend to otherwise uh, corrode more. So actually really like these knives. I'm probably gonna keep both of these because these are just, I mean, they feel so good. They're awesome. Uh, and I mean, look at that. That's just, that's super cool. Uh, and relatively lightweight for such a big knife. So I like these a lot. I actually do recommend these cheap knives. Um, yeah, um, definitely get some of these if you've been thinking about it. There's really no reason to avoid them. They are fantastic little knives. So there is my review. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out my giveaway that is still going on.